Hello, and welcome to episode 85 of Design Curious Podcast. I'm your host and mentor, Rebecca Ward. Today on the podcast, I'm talking to you about managing clients and their expectations through the projects and just really best practices for having a wonderful relationship with your clients. So there's a lot to say there, and I think you'll find it interesting. Before we get into that, though, I want to remind you about all the downloads and courses and mentoring platform that I have for you. My Design Mentor is a great place to start your career in interior design. There's 12 modules I take you through to educate you about all the things you need to know about the career and stimulate conversations that you can then schedule calls with me to talk about one-on-one or talk about with the community on the platform. So if that interests you, go ahead and click on the link and sign up for My Design Mentor. I'd love to have you in there. All right, let's talk about client management. You're now listening to Design Curious, a place where you, creative one, are here to learn about what it really is like to be an interior designer. And I'm your host and mentor, Rebecca Ward. If you're worried about how to succeed in a creative career, if you're ready to learn your next steps to become an interior designer, and if you want the satisfaction of doing something you love every day, you are in the right place. Grab a coffee, a notebook, and let's dig into today's episode. So when you're a designer, managing a client through a project is one of the most important things that you're doing. Besides designing, that's the fun part for designers, it's the creative part, and besides billing and making sure you get paid, which is usually not the fun part for designers, but the interaction with the client is a very key role. And oftentimes you're in residential design because you don't mind working with a client one-on-one and helping them through a project. Otherwise, if you're not inclined to be very personable with your clients, then you might gravitate more towards commercial design or some other setting where you're dealing with a corporation, a business, or someone else, and it's not hand-holding a client through a project. So today I'm talking about my advice for how to manage a client's expectations as you're going through the project with them. So the first thing to remember is to be open and honest from the beginning about how you work, what your pricing is, so that clients have realistic expectations about what it's like to work with you. This means that your website, your initial communications with a prospective client should be 100% open and honest. It's all about transparency. And the more they know about you, the better they can determine if you're the right designer for them. So I like to have this transparency by listing on the website what my fees are, how much the consultations cost, and everything like that, so that they know what they're getting into before they even contact us. Then once we're in the initial consultation for a project, we'll go through the contract and the contract spells out with a lot of transparency how I'm charging them, when I'm charging them, when they can expect an invoice, what their role is through the design process, and what my role is, and why I need to be there for project management. A lot of details like that, just so your contract is going to be your best tool for really helping the client understand your process and why they're hiring you and all the experience that's going into your project. Next, you want to have all of your communications with the client be consistent. So your welcome packet is going to tell them a little bit more about the process, about who you are and what they can expect from you. And then once you start working with the client, you want to have clear and open communication. So in the contract, it's already been stated how you are going to communicate with them. And so what I like to do is every Friday, send an email with updates on the project so the client doesn't have to be wondering through the weekend what was going on this last week. And then we also spell out how we prefer to communicate with the client through email, but we do allow them to text the business line. And uh, if they do, then we'll often follow up with an email just so we can track it because email is the way that I can really file things away and search for a conversation that I know we had. I'm like, oh, I know I said this in an email somewhere, but if it's in a text, it's really going to be challenging to find. And then also that they know that I am not going to be answering emails or phone calls 
after hours or on weekends. And so having that as a clearly defined point in your contract and in the rest of your documentation through the the process, then they're not going to be upset that because they texted the phone line on Saturday afternoon that you're not responding till Monday. So even if they do, that's fine, but they're you're not going to get told till Monday. So there's a lot of platforms and portals that can improve communication. Like we use Studio Designer. So this has a client portal in there. They have all their invoices and proposals so they can go in there at any time just to see what it is that they still need to pay or what the proposal was. And then there's other portals through platforms like Devsado and many other places that have a client management software that can help you to manage your client and that they can do things after hours, even on their own in that portal that you don't have to manage them directly. So it is important to have healthy boundaries with your clients because you have a life and they have a life. And it's important that you're at your best when you're meeting with them. So that's partly why I now am very strict about the Monday through Friday, nine to five hours for my company, because I have done it before where I'm meeting with a client on a Saturday and I'm kind of regretting it that I made that appointment because I'd rather be hanging out with my family. So I haven't done that for years, but once I had done it when I I first had my baby and I really did not want to be away from my baby, but here I was on a Saturday with the client instead, or I'd be a Friday evening at the client's house. Everybody's tired. I'm tired, but I'm just trying to do a presentation for them. And then their kid is crying and no one's focused on what I'm trying to say because it's Friday evening, just because that was the best time for everybody to meet. Doesn't mean it's the best time to do the presentation. (laughs) Nobody's going to say yes when they're tired and they just want to sit in front of the TV and relax. So there's a reason why you have these boundaries is so that you can be your best. They can come into your office or even if you go to their house for a presentation, it's during the day and during the time when you can focus on what you're presenting to them and that they can respond without any other distractions. Also having healthy boundaries is good when you need to say no to a client because your client is trusting you as a design expert. Sometimes their request is not the best for the design or their home. So know when to stand your ground on a design decision And if your client is ideal, they'll understand they should trust your judgment when you feel strongly about something. And doing this in a professional, friendly, but firm way is the key to build a better relationship overall. Similarly, knowing when to stand your ground over business practices. If a client is questioning your contract, for example, remember that you've spent a lot of time making sure your contract is properly protecting you and the client. And it's written up that way for a reason. So hear out your client on subjects like this and then take time to consider their notes. And if it feels right to you, you can change it. But remember, it's your business and you get to decide how you run it. Then there are certain things you should always be firm on. If someone calls and says that you're too expensive for them and asks that you consider to reduce your rate, the answer is no. (laughs) I never negotiate my design fees. Stay firm on your non-negotiables and remember the value that you hold always results in healthier relationships. Another thing you want to do when you are managing your clients is to always be a person of your word. So if you tell them you're sending your invoices by the fifth of the month, then you want to make sure that it's sent to them. Things like this make it easier for the client to trust you over time with different aspects. And so when they trust you because you've kept your word so many times, then they know that when (laughs) the project is under construction and there's something that seems to be going wrong, but you know that you can fix it and you tell the client it will be fixed, not to worry, that they can trust you because you have proven to be trustworthy throughout this whole relationship. And then at the end of the project, take time to reflect on your client's experience Put yourself in their shoes and consider how you could have done things differently if there's anything that you need to learn or maybe revise for the next time. Every project is kind of a teaching opportunity. So it's good to ask the client directly for feedback. And it's also good to ask for referrals and for their reviews on your website for Google or for wherever you want your review to go. And then write down the notes for updating your process 
and understand what might be necessary to improve your client experience. But the key is to have consistent, honest communication throughout the process. I mean, treat your client through the process like you would want to be treated yourself, right? In the golden rule. (laughs) So not every client is going to treat you back. And so that's why we talked about having firm boundaries and when to say no and maybe even firing a client who doesn't stand up to what your values are as far as a relationship with them. This is another reason why it's important to define what your core values are as a person, but also as a business. Because like one of the things that I have for my core values is kindness. I definitely want to be kind to my clients, but I also want to work with people who are kind to me. And then another one of my core values that would come into play here is integrity. So having an integrity and transparency throughout my process with my clients so that they can find me trustworthy and that we can have a very good relationship to work through the project with. And then hopefully they love everything. And then the next time they need a designer, they're going to call you up again. And this has happened with a lot of projects lately as past clients coming back and wanting to work with me again or giving a referral to a friend or family member who needs a designer because they had such a wonderful experience working with you before. So some of the things we talked about should be quite obvious. It's good for relationships in general, let alone just a designer to a client. And so use your best judgment when signing a contract with a client. Make sure that they're the ones that you want to spend the next six months, a year with. (laughs) If there's any red flags going up when you talk to them on the initial intake call or when you're meeting with them, you can decide to say no to that client at any time. You don't have to work with every client that seeks you out. So just remember that, but hopefully you have a lot of lovely clients that are seeking you out because they're attracted to what you're putting out there on your website and in your social media and everything like that. So I wish you well with dealing with your clients. And if you have any questions, of course, you can email me podcast at rwarddesign.com or sign up for my mentoring program. And we can work through all of your questions about handling clients and projects in there. That's it for this week. I'll have another great episode for you next week. And until then, stay creative. Thanks for listening. If you love this episode, please leave a rating and a review. This helps me reach other curious creatives like you. If you have a topic request or would like to contact me, simply head over to my website, rwarddesign.com or email me at podcast at rwarddesign.com.